Hey guys, I'm Nick and in this tutorial we will take a look at the setup that was used in the Dior Sauvage course which I made recently. I put tons of work in it and I would say it's my best learning material and packed with uh, useful tips and tricks not only about Houdini and rendering but also about interacting with clients and building your freelance business. If you want to learn more, link to my Patreon will be in the description. You can check all of my tutorials and other stuff that I do. And I hope to see you in our Patreon Discord community. I wanted to share this effect because it's super easy to replicate this desert, or in our case, it's more like a Mars landscape um, with uh, some noises and point whoops in Houdini. And also here we have um, a bit of noises in the material itself. Uh, this is uh, rendered using Redshift, but you can do that with Octane too. So let's start with uh, yeah our setup and let's go node by node and check what we got here. So of course we start with the grid. For this one, this grid is pretty dense. So size, because I'm rendering it vertically for Instagram and TikTok and all that stuff, uh, the size is 10 by 5, rows are set to 500, and columns, and here is the trick that I just clicked here, copy parameter, so I am copying the rows uh, parameter channel, and then in the columns I can select, right click it, and there will be paste relative references, and then it will paste this ch rows um, here so I want it to be squared so basically if our height is two times bigger than our width our columns also should be two times um, the number of rows and because we actually copied that channel we can now let's say set it to be 800 and here you can see that we are getting 1600 so it's pretty pretty useful to just link parameters to other parameters especially if they are just multiplications or subdivisions or something but yeah for now it's uh this pretty dense dense grid you want to go with a pretty dense grid because we will be actually like uh displacing it and it's not a displacement based on texture it's an actual displacement of the geometry so that's why we kind of want to get this uh, pretty dense dense geometry of course we need to uv unwrap that to prevent our textures to floating away and just uh yeah your usual uv unwrap will work fine here and now we have uh, these three paths to follow for now um i would say let's begin with the pyrosaur spread simulation because uh this pyrosaur spread is basically done only for the this transition part where we reveal the desert so it's a pretty default scenario with this uh, transition or kind of attribute manipulation we create a grid it's uh, super tiny here just just a few points and then we create the attribute and we set our group here our group one which is kind of our initial burning group and we set the attribute name to be temp temperature and the value should be 100 then we go and run pyrosaur spread and let me get back with this one so here you can play with these settings and possibly get more kind of like non-uniform temperature uh, or burning and temperature diffusion rates um, also if i highlight the temperature right now for now i won't be focusing on all of these values because it will make the tutorial much longer but it's uh, for me it's much more like a trial and error thing and I'm just experimenting till I am satisfied with how it looks so for this one uh, if I file cache it I actually file cached 900 or no actually I filed cached if I delete that channel I file cached 900 frames I think because yeah, it wasn't growing that fast, but here you can see basically how that pyro spread works. The main thing to get this uh, non-uniform look is probably here in the diffusion, just play with this um, diffusion rate noise and that will make it make it non-uniform. Um, but yeah, anyways, I don't want my animation to be like 30 seconds long, so I retimed it. Drop to retime, speed set to 3.5, input range 1 to 700, output range 1 to 240, so here you can see we have at the frame 240, it's, it's nearly all painted in red. It means that temperature changes from 0 to 100, 
So then I want to remap my temperature. So I've created this uh, at temp. So here I dropped an attribute wrangle and created this uh, attribute called temp. And then I remap the temperature using fit01 function. I remap it to be, yeah, 0 and 1. I know that at this point, temperature is way higher than if we go here and check the read time. Here you can see that temperature goes 11 and 0. But actually just remapping it using fit01 um, somehow works for me and produces the result that I actually need. So let's just remove the visualization from the pyrosol spread and go to the color. So this is our temp, our remapped temperature. And it goes pretty good, but I want a, I want a bit smoother result here because, yeah, again, I wanted to reveal with a, with a nice file off. So I add an attribute blur, attribute set to CD. We are blurring the color data, blurring iterations 100, step size 1, and pin border points is unchecked, influence type set to proximity, and max number set to 50. And it results in this nice blurry blob. So that's one thing that we need. So basically, we created the setup that will allow us to kind of interpolate between state when it's just plain, like a grid, like you see right now, and of course we have this state with uh, all of the terrain things and we want to kind of use our color data to go between these two states. For the actual desert scene I'm using uh, three attribute warps and this one is producing mostly like bigger chunks um, then I add some fine details, like all of these. And of course, then I add some, some erosion here. So let's go and check what we, what we get here. Um, they all will be like, like this. I mean, we are just adding noise to the Y, uh, to the position of each point, And we are adding that only on Y axis. So that's why we need to drop a vector to float, uh, plug the position and split the position vector into three floats. And then we grab our position and drop an attribute noise and plug that position into the, sorry, not the attribute, anti-aliased noise. Uh, we plug that position into the position of the noise. For this one, frequency is set to, let me also visualize the big chunks here. So um, you can play with this roughness, but yeah, again, then it produces too much of the fine detail. And for example, amplitude, you can play with that too. And most important would be the frequency because changing the frequency actually adds, adds a, a lot more or actually decreases the scale of all of these chunks. So for this one, I'm using 0.5 and 0.5 and it's X and Y. Um, yeah, so then I just dropped an add and uh, yeah, I'm adding this noise to the initial position of the points, uh, the Y position. Uh, then I drop the float, float to vector. So I plug the X, Z as they are, as they came out from the vector to float. And that add goes to the Y input of the float to vector. And then that goes into position. Um, absolutely same thing with the fine terrain, uh, as you can see here. I think I just... Uh, yeah, I'm using less frequency, uh, less amplitude and uh, roughness, much more roughness, basically. And for the erosion, actually, I'm using turbulent noise. I'm using alligator noise here and frequency set to 0.1, amplitude 1.2, roughness 0 0.596 and turbulence set to 4. So, yep. But also, I wanted to create some sort of, uh, you know, the, the areas where the noise is less less visible or less prominent and that's why i drop the attribute noise float and i connect the our uv wrap to to that attribute noise float i called the attribute field um added a, a bit of noise we can add color color node and visualize our field so basically all the all the white parts receive less noise and um, here in the attribute wrangle I'm using this linear interpolation function that yeah, basically interpolates between two states of geometry. Uh, it's uh, very important that this geometry, uh, like both geometries that you are interpolating between, should have same point count. Uh, so it doesn't mean that you can interpolate from anything to anything. But since we are just modifying the geometry, we are not adding or introducing new points or even deleting them. 
uh, we can interpolate between them. So the interpolating parameter will be field and that's how, yeah, you can see here all the white parts and all the black parts. Um, so in this one, we are creating the variable value, which equals to the field attribute. And yeah, now here we set the position to be the result of the linear interpolation function, which is called lerp. So what we have here is we are interpolating between the position of points from the first input and first input is actually this one because it goes 0, 1, 2, 3. So we are interpolating between these points and just our position. And here you can see that I'm just referencing the position and it's, it's actually this position, the, the point position of this grid here that goes into the input number 0. And uh, yep, we are interpolating using that value which you can see here, which is this field. And that's how we have these parts. Uh, let me visualize again. So it goes, yeah, this this part here receives very, very less, uh, less noise. If we also uncheck the output row value, you will see how how drastic this result is actually. Um, yeah, I like it to it to be to be somewhere checked um, because then it's not that not not that drastic, you know, but uh, who knows? And then after our attribute wrangle with this lerp function, we drop another attribute wrangle and actually use the, the same lerp function. Um, just the difference will be in the value because here I'm actually creating an attribute that will be stored in our geometry spreadsheet and I'm calling it value and it's equal to the red channel of the color of that geometry. So here in the in the black areas, red channel is obviously zero. And when it's red, it's obviously one. And that's how I basically interpolate between those two states of the geometry. And then here I just, uh, yeah, I was experimenting and I wanted to um, kind of a bit a bit better visualization uh, on this stuff. I just don't like red and black. I'm so used to it with uh, nearly every every Houdini tutorial that involves some sort of uh, attribute transfer. But yeah, um, so then we add our normals and that's it for for the actual setup. I strongly recommend using file caches, of course, because it just gives you a better way to preview and a bit faster than without it when it actually like kind of uh, calculates the interpolation between each frame. So yeah. Now, camera is just like a basic top top down camera. The only thing is to avoid really heavy distortion. I'm using the focal length uh, set to 120. And uh, yeah, I think let's go and check the materials because uh, they are pretty, pretty interesting here. So here's the, the that initial grid that doesn't look that interesting, I think. But uh, yeah, still, um, I won't be touching these settings here because they are mostly all default with a really rough material and uh, yeah that's that's it i want to show you some some things with uh with the actual noise so if i remove this one you can see that this is the noise i'm using the maxon noise noise type set to displace turbulence and i'm just mixing these uh, two colors, overall scale 10, contrast is set to a bit negative because I don't need any visibility here actually. Uh, so yeah, minus, minus 0, 0.61 again. But the, the main thing is not about the color, main thing is about the actual like bumps. So what we have here is a mix of a couple, couple noises. And the thing is that I'm using different noise for the main grid and I'm using different noise for the actual landscape when when it reveals so let me show you how the like main noise ju just the main noise main noise looks so yeah here you can see it it's more like a sand dunes right now or if we plug our base noise to the diffuse color here you can see how how it looks and maybe should should go um yeah, a bit zoomed in because um, my monitor isn't that big and you probably cannot see it very well. But maybe we can also switch to the camera 2. Yeah, and camera 2 is more like a close-up. So here's our basic noise, right? Which is just, just a terrain. And here is the noise that I want to add to the generated surface to when, when we reveal the desert. So we can plug that again here. 
and you can see that this has much more details and is much more prominent and if in this case I'm using RS noise noise type set to fractal complexity 4 and that to gain 3 frequency scale also 3 and also I'm I played a bit with the coordinates and of course the bump maps should be set to high field and height scale for this one it's really tiny like 0 0.03 for these noises um it's uh, i think it's the same fractal noise right um yeah with just different parameters that control the noise and i suggest you playing with these with these params a lot because yeah you can see changing one thing and it already looks uh looks different i think it was like 3.4 here in the distortion so also i'm blending them with the maxon noise with this displaced turbulence and why it's done like that is just because i want let me plug this into the diffuse color so we can see it a bit better so here you can see it's also very subtle um i don't want it to actually look like if there is are these stripes um that's why i'm using the negative contrast negative uh, like minus 0 0.61 because here you can you can actually see these stripes here or maybe it's just me because i'm working with this uh, several for several hours and now i just see every tiny repetition but yeah i think 0. Uh, Six minus 0 0.6 is a good value here so yeah uh, mixing two noises here and using just one noise here and then i'm mixing these setups so the mix of two noise and our um, basic noise i'm mixing that with this uh, bump blender and here you can see that i'm using particle with lookup attribute name set to value and the value was that that thing that here if we go to the frame 61 for example here the value is one and here the value is zero so i'm using that to actually mix between this noise here and this much more detailed noise um here and now connecting this bump blender with these two separated like textured textures generated from the noise here you can really see how we have this not that detailed noise um, for our grid and then it evolves into this much much more detailed noise for uh, the actual desert when it gets uh, built and uh, yeah that's I think that's it for that bump map um, I have this uh, really basic noise that I actually wanna I wanna show it to you first of all so we plug that in diffuse color and yeah you can see I think it's here somewhere here somewhere there uh, if I remove the brightness or maybe up the contrast to be two, yeah, that's uh, that's my noise here. So after that, I actually plug that into the roughness channel. Just to introduce like a really really subtle variation uh, that you can see here. And this roughness uh, channel is kind of optional because uh, yeah, again you can play as I did here, um, trying different different options. Maybe you don't need it, or yeah, again, maybe just just use another noise. Uh, it's very very personal and subjective, so it's up to you. And then for yeah, the the light Aris light sun, which is animated, and basically it goes from from this state here. Actually, we need something to to cast a shadow from. So here and goes from shining from this side all the way to this one. I think it goes like somehow like this but i've made it just uh keyframing the rotation of the sun so yeah all right guys so i think that's it for this uh, quick and easy desert setup desert build up you can create insanely cool landscapes just using these point warps i really hope it was useful even more cool stuff is on my patreon be sure to check it out link is in the description and i will be back very soon bye